In this uh, video, uh, I'm going to talk about matrix factorizations. Okay, so, um, so this is a really uh, nice way to, uh, or if you're given a matrix, uh, there's a way to write that matrix as a product of two matrices. Okay? So suppose that A is a n by n matrix uh, that can be row reduced to echelon form. Then uh, A can be written as L times U, okay? where L is the lower triangular matrix. So L is essentially M by M uh, with ones on the diagonal and U is an echelon form, okay? So, so the idea here, okay, is that right, you, have, you have your matrix A, okay? Um, we're assuming that it's M by N, This is A, and so this can be broken down to L is going to be, so L has to be, uh, so it's gonna be M by M. So L always has to be square for this, okay? And U, okay, uh, U is going to be M by, uh, M by N. Because remember, so if the matrix is n by n, then that means these two have to be the same, okay? And so since, since this is m here, this has to be m. So therefore, because l is square, this must be m. Therefore, this has to match. And in order to get n, this has to be n. So that's gonna that's that's important to uh, to know how these are um, to know to know the um, how the sizes work. Um, all right, so so we can actually we'll go through an example of this. Right, I'll show you an example of how to do this. Okay, um, and so this can also be used to to solve a system. Okay, so let's say we have our usual system here of a x equals to b, and uh, let's say that a right. So we can rewrite a as l times u. So this is going to give us L times U times the solution vector equals to B. So L times U is equal to A. So then what we can, so because L, because U times X um, is a vector, so we can call this, we can denote that to be C. So what this will give us is basically uh, two systems. Uh, one system we have L, times C, right? This is all C here, that I'm, I'm letting this be equal to C. This is gonna be a vector. So a matrix times a vector gives you a vector. Okay, so we have L times C equals to B. And then we also have, right? U times X equals to C. So basically it, this is what we call decoupling of a system. Okay, so we have a system here and we're breaking it down into two systems. So we know that L times C is equal to B. So the idea is that we can solve this for C. Once we solve for C, we have we can use this one right, to solve for X. And this, and because L and U, so L is the lower triangular matrix and U is upper triangular. So it's pretty, uh, it's computationally efficient uh, to, compute the, um, to compute the solution to this. You can actually take this, uh, you can actually implement this idea on a parallel machine, and then you can solve these simultaneously. So it's a, definitely a more efficient way than solving a system, especially when it comes to uh, if you're if you're using like an inverse to solve this, because inverses are really computationally very expensive to do, especially for large major for for very large matrices. Okay. Uh, so let's go over uh, an example of given a matrix. How do we get the LU factorization? All right, so let's say, let's say we wanna find the LU factorization of a given matrix.
So there's our matrix. Okay, we have three minus seven, negative two, two, negative three, five, one, zero, six, negative four, zero, negative five, negative nine, five, negative five, and 12. So what we want to do is figure out uh, L and U. That gives us A. Okay. So to so we we, we kind of already we, we already know how to uh, how to do the first part because U, right? U is just the um, U is just the upper triangular matrix. So we can apply those elementary row operations to A and then end up with U. So let's let's go to that. We're going to find you first. All right. I'm going to find you. Okay. So in order, so again, so this is, so to do this, we have to use a, we have to use that a very uh, specific way. We have to do this a very specific way. Remember that. So we, so we have our pivot here and we use this pivot to make these zero. Then we use this pivot to make these zero and then, and then so on. Okay. All right, so starting with, so starting with the three here, okay, since there's positive, negative, we're just gonna take row one and add it to row two. And store that result in row two. And then I'll go ahead and do the second one. Uh, I'll go ahead and do this, uh, the second operation in the same step. So for this, to make that zero, we have to multiply this by minus two and then add it to row three. So it's important, it's important to keep track of these row operations because um, it turns out to get L, we have to see, we have to go back to these and look um, and look at the coefficients. Okay, so we'll get to that later. So we're gonna take minus two times R1, add it to row three, we're gonna store that result in row three. And then because of negative nine, we're gonna multiply this by three. So multiply, to row, uh, multiply row one by three, add it to row four. Okay, so going through those, we end up getting this. We have three minus seven minus two, two. So that's gonna give us zero here. Okay. And we get minus two, negative one, two. Here we get zero, 10, four, negative nine, zero, minus 16, negative 11, and 18. Okay, there we go. So that's the result of going through the, doing these first three row operations. Now the next thing is to make these values zero. All right, so we're gonna do that by, we need to do that by multiplying, uh, we need to multiply this one by negative eight, okay? All right, so let's do that. Make sure I have the right number here. Actually, we need to make, yeah, so we need to make this zero. So we need to multiply, uh, we, need to, we first need to make that zero. So we need to multiply this one by uh, five. And then we're gonna multiply by negative eight to make that zero. So let's do that, uh, let's do that over here. So five times row two, add it to row three, store the result in row three. Again, the reason is because we need to make, right, we're using that as our pivot. We need to make that zero, so we multiply this by five. Five times negative two is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 10 is gonna be a zero. Okay, so that, uh, so we need to do that. And then um, to make that zero, we need to multiply row two by negative eight. So minus eight times row two, we add it to row four, store, make that result and overwrite row four. Okay, so the first row is not going to change, obviously. Second row will not change. Uh, for the third row, we're going to get a two. Okay. Uh, 
I'm sorry, that's gonna be zero. So zero, uh, zero minus one, one, and then zero, zero minus three and two. Okay, so that's after that's so we get this result after applying these two row operations to this matrix. Okay, the next thing is to use this pivot, right? To use this pivot to make that zero. So we're going to multiply row three by negative three, add it to row four. Do that over here. So multiply row three by negative three, add it to row four store that result in row four. So that is going to give us, so that's gonna give us this. So for row, the first row doesn't change. And then we end up with this. All right, so we're gonna get zero. Zero, zero, and minus one. Okay. All right, so I get three minus seven, negative two, two, zero, uh, negative two, sorry, zero, negative two, negative one, two, zero, zero, negative one. Uh, that should be one. Yeah. That should be one. And then zero, 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 negative one. All right, there we go. So going through those elementary row operations from chapter one. We end up with we end up with this. Okay. So all right. So what I do here is I'm going to put some labels here. So one, I would say, so we did the we did the first one. I'm gonna call this a second. This is I'm gonna call a third, fourth one, fifth one, and the sixth one. Okay. So this was for the so this was for the first. For the second, the third, uh, the fourth one here, fifth one. So, so the first one made that zero, second one made that zero, third row operation made that zero, and the fourth one made that zero, fifth one made that zero, and sixth one made this zero. Okay, so now here's the thing. So we have, right, so we have u there. So notice, so by definition, it's an upper triangular form, right? Meaning that right, if you look at your diagonals, right, so if you look at the values below the diagonal, they're all zero. So this is up, so, that, so upper triangle, right? So, so upper triangle form by definition. So all the values below the uh, main diagonal are zero. So that's the definition for upper triangle form. And again, we did that by using these elementary row operations. All right, so that is, uh, so that's you, okay. So how do we get L? Well, L is going to be achieved by going back, we have to look at what the coefficients, uh, or which, or which coefficients we used. So, all right, so going back here, so we have one, minus two, three, five, negative eight, and minus three here. Okay, and so L, remember by definition, uh, for the for this form, okay, we're assuming that L is going to contain ones on the main diagonal. So okay, we have, it's gonna be one, zero, right, zero, okay, and one more. Since we're working with a four by four, so L has to be four by four. So lower triangular matrix, you have your ones on a diagonal and everything above that diagonal should be zero, okay, by definition, okay, for the lower triangular matrix, for the one that we're using. So how, so now, okay, so how do we get, right, so how do we get these entries? Well, we go back to the numbers, to the coefficients we used. And then what we do is we take the opposite, okay? So we use the one here, so we use one, right? So one here to make that zero. Okay, so that means we're gonna have negative one here. Okay, and that same respective position, right? The next one for right, we used minus two, so this is going to become two. Okay. Right. 
The next one we use three to make that zero. So this is going to be minus three here. Okay. And then fourth step, we used five to make that zero. So that means for this, right? The same position, that's going to be minus five. And then for this one, we use negative eight. So that means this is going to be eight. And then finally, for the last one, for six, okay, which is here, okay? So we used minus three to make that zero. So that means this entry, okay? So this corresponds to this entry. So that's going to be a positive three. Use the opposite. And the reason, so the reason we use the opposite value has to do with the elementary matrices. So I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later, okay? So there it is. There's our, uh, so we have our result, okay? Right. So if you take L, right, and this is U here, right? If you take L times U, you end up getting, right, you end up getting back A. So that is how you, uh, that is how you, that, or that's, I should say, one of the ways we can, uh, we can factor our matrix. Uh, later on, we're going to talk about other ways, um, like, for example, diagonalization, uh, uh, and also um, singular value decomposition, which is a type of factorization. Okay. All right. So, uh, so that's how it works. Okay. Um, and so let's do an example. Let's go over an example of. Uh, where we're going to do an LU, we'll do an LU factorization and we'll um, use that to solve a system. Okay. So another point, so another thing I want to mention here is that these, right, so for what, for this purpose, these are the only elementary row operations that will make this work. In other words, if you switch rows, uh, if you multiply a row by a constant, it's going to mess things up. All right, so so these are the only ones that are allowed to use okay, for this kind of LU factorization. Very, very important. Okay? And it has to be done. That's why I said at the beginning of the semester, that's why I said it, okay, if you learn, if you, if you apply the row operations uh, using this strategy, uh, then uh, it will help you later on, which is, which is what we're doing now. Okay. okay. All right, so let's do another example where we have to use this to solve a system. Okay, so let's say we have, let's say A is equal to this. We have, let's see, four, three minus five, negative four minus five and seven, and eight, six, and minus eight. And let's say our vector B is equal to two minus four and six. So we have A, right, our coefficient matrix, and we have B, and we want to solve for a solution vector, right, um, using the LU factorization approach. Okay, so start with this. All right, so, okay. Okay. Um, Right, we need to transform this into an upper triangular matrix. Okay. Um, by the way, so here, right, so we want to 
we don't like we you don't want to switch rows or we don't want to switch the rows here. We so you start applying your row operations with whatever the matrix is right away. If you start switching things, it's gonna it's really gonna uh, it'll cause problems in your solution vector. Okay, so you, you just start to you start to apply the row operations right away. Okay. Um, so in this case, uh, we need to multiply this by row one by one, and then add it to row two. That will give us zero here. So we're going to take one times row one, add it to row two, store the result in row two. All right, so that's going to be zero. And I'll go ahead and put in the third row. So I guess I'll, what I'll do is I'll do that. I'll do that also on the second step. So the second row becomes zero minus two and two. So let's go ahead and uh, do, uh, let's go ahead and work on this one. So we need to multiply first row by negative two and then add it to the third row. So minus two times row one, add it to row three, and store that result in row three. So that's gonna give us zero, zero, and two. Okay. So the reason I chose this example is because sometimes this kind of situation happens here. Notice that when we applied uh, when we when we applied the second row operation, uh, this this position became zero. Okay, so sometimes right, so sometimes that can happen, right? Um, so when that happens, then uh, when we construct L, we're just going to keep that as zero, okay? Because there was no, we didn't use a direct, there was no direct row operation that made this zero, okay? So the row operation we used was for this pivot, okay? Not for this pivot, okay? Um, so we're gonna notice that when we, when we construct L, okay? So, um, so we have U, let's put U there. In fact, that's well. Just go ahead and call this U. Save some space here. So that is our upper triangular matrix. Okay. And now let's construct, right? Let's construct L. Okay. And remember L, okay, uh, for this kind of LU factorization, the diag the, the entries on the diagonal must be once. Okay, there are some other there are some other algorithms where um, where these may not necessarily be one. Okay, so for example, I think in Octave, yeah, in Octave, if you do an LU factor, there's a way you can do LU factorization, and I will um, I will um, I will show you uh, I'll, I'll show you in uh, in another video. Okay, so so the L so. That factorization, um, so some some algorithms will have different values here, uh, but the point is it's still a, it's still a lower triangular, uh, it's still going to be a lower triangular uh, matrix. Okay. All right. So um, so for the time being, we're assuming that the, the lower triangular matrix that we're working with, we're assuming that the, the entries on the on the main diagonal are ones. Okay. Okay. So again, how do we get L? Well, we go back to go back to what we uh, we go back to our row operations. So we have we used one here, okay? Make that zero. We used minus two here. Okay. So first, right? So for the first step, and then this is for the second step. Okay. So for L, okay. Because we use one, so that is, so we use one to make that zero. So this is going to become minus one. So you, you take the opposite value. And then for this, right, for this part, we use minus two. So this is going to become two. And again, because we, this became zero from this step. So this zero didn't come directly of using this pivot. So we just put a zero there. Okay. All right, as a default. Okay. And so there's L. Okay, so we, if you take this matrix times U, you end up getting A. Okay, all right. 
so so from here uh, we're going to uh, we're going to proceed to solve this okay so remember the uh, the idea is this okay? and I think I'll go ahead and erase this part so we have right, a x equals to b we have our system and we break down A into L U. Okay. And then this, okay, so if we if we call this part C, so I, it's using C as a just as a, a variable, okay. So, okay, so we have right L C equals to B, where C is this, then we have U X equals to C. So we have this system, right? And then we can use, right? We can solve for C. Once we solve for C, we can solve for X. So again, this is called decoupling a system. Okay. All right. So let's apply that to what we have here. So first, right? We have. Okay. So first, we're going to solve for C. Right? Okay. So we have. One zero zero minus one one zero two zero one, and then we can go ahead and augment the vector b onto that. Okay. If you want, so yes, if you want, it, it, it can be shown that l and u are invertible. So you could actually solve this system uh, using the uh, using the inverse idea, but these are Again, these are so, because of the structure. Uh, we can easily uh, do substitution here. Okay. All right. So let's see. So you can see that solving for this. Okay. So when we solve this, you can see that uh, C one was going to be two. This step. C one is going to be two. So this step, okay, we're going to get minus, so this is minus C1 plus C2 equals negative 4. So since C1 is 2, this is going to be minus 2 plus C2 equals to 4. Therefore, C2 has to be equal to uh, C. This is going to be what? So C2, C, so that has to be, C1 is 2, right? So we're going to get 2, so negative 2. So C2 has to be, uh, hold on here. Oh, C2 is, oh, this is negative 4, sorry. Sorry about that. So C, so this is negative 4. So therefore, C2 has to be negative 2. Okay. Perfect. All right, so that's good. So now, let's go down here. So we have 2 times C1 plus zero times C2, so we don't need that value, plus C3 equals to six. Okay, so we plug in C1, right? And C3 is what we're trying to solve for. So we get uh, C3 is gonna be equal to two. So this is just four times, or sorry, four plus C3 equals to six. So C3 is simply going to be two. So we have our, right? So we have our, uh, we have our solution vector now for C. We have two, minus two, and two. Okay, there's, so that's this, that's the solution for this one, okay, for this, for this system. The next thing is now, okay, we know C, all right, we know C. So we can solve for X now. All right. Okay, well, this is gonna be, so that's for you, right? So for, for this one. Okay, so U is calculated here. Okay. Well, again, I'm gonna augment U and C. So 
there's the upper triangular matrix and C was this one. Okay. So again, we can use, uh, we can, so we can use substitution here, specifically what's called back substitution. Uh, by the way, this is called forward substitution, where you're going from. So we went, we started here and it went down. From here, we start here and then go our way up. So that's called, so that's called a back substitution. This is called forward substitution. All right. All right, so I get, so let's start down here. Uh, so C3, right? Uh, so obviously C3 is going to be one here. This is just two times C3 equals two. two. C3 will be one. This is going to be minus two times C2 plus two times C3 equals two minus two. Right? So then, okay. So we know we know C3 is one, so this is going to be minus two times C2 plus two equals two minus two. Okay, and that's going to give us uh, let's see, C3 was one, so that's going to yeah, that's going to give us a value of two. Okay, so that you'll see that. So we get minus uh, two times C2 equals to minus four. So C2 has to be two. Okay, so we got the second value. All right. So from here, this is gonna be four times C1 plus three times C2 minus five, to, five times C3. That's gonna be equal to two. Uh, let's, let's go down here actually. Okay, so we know C2 and we know C3. So this is gonna be four times C1 plus C2 was two minus five times C3, C3 was one. And this is all gonna be equal to two. Okay, so we have four times C1 plus get six minus five, which is one equals to two. Um, all right, so we're going to get uh, C1 is going to turn out to be one fourth. Oh, there it is. All right, so, all right, so our solution, right? And actually, this should be, I use C, but I should have, I should have used X here. Oh, okay. So, I'll just put X here, X1, X2. I'll just change all these. Okay, so these are all, just change the variable. Okay. That's, that's better because we're working in terms of X here. So, yeah. all right, so make sure everything's correct here. All right, everything looks fine. Yeah, all right, sorry about that. That should be, yeah, should have been more careful here. Um, yeah, because we're working in terms of X, but the value, the solutions, I mean, the, ve the solution vector is still fine. Okay, so, right, so we have X, okay. So X1, okay, X1 is one fourth, okay. Is here, X2 is here. And X3 is here. So we have one fourth 
x2 was 2, x3 is 1. And there it is. There's our solution vector, okay? So that's how the process works, okay? So you have, right? So you have, you have your system, we have A, we have B, okay? We first find, uh, we first figure out the, uh, the, the, the upper, right? The upper triangular form, okay? Using the row operations, right? And then once we once we do that, then we can figure, then we can construct L based on the based on the row operations. And then from there, okay, uh, we solve for L C equals to B, okay. Uh, right? So our L is defined here, okay. And then you do that by using what's called a forward substitution. So C one is equal to two. Uh, from here we can right, we can solve for uh, so C two and then solve for C. And once we have the vector C, then we can solve for X. That's what's done here. So you have your, your upper triangular matrix, right? Okay, and the, uh, and the vector C from up here. And then you can solve this using back substitution. Right. Okay. Um, so let me let me go through another example. This time I want to show you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I want to show you the LU factors the LU factorization for a non-square matrix because we can uh, apply that there as well. By the way, again, these are, you can find these examples in the notes, okay? Those notes are on Canvas, right? All right. Right, there's our matrix. Okay, so you notice it's a uh, three by four. All right, so we have two, zero, five, two, uh, minus six, three, negative 13, negative three, four, nine, 16, and 17. Well, this is a three by four. That's important to note that because uh, uh, we have to keep track of the, uh, or we have to look at the, make sure things are compatible when it comes to multiplying L times U. All right, so let's uh, start with our row operations. So we need to make uh, we need to make this zero. So we're going to do that by multiplying row one by three and then adding it to row two. First row doesn't change. The second row becomes zero, three, two, and minus three. 
And then let's go ahead and uh, take care of this value. So we need to multiply row one by negative two. Add that to row three, store that result in row three. This will be zero, nine, six, and 13. Okay. So the next thing is that uh, we need to use this pivot to make that zero. So we're gonna take minus uh, three times row two, add it to row three and store that result in row three. Row three, two minus three. So row one and row two obviously don't change. So we're going to get, let's see, uh, negative three. Oh, this should be, all right, this should be. Uh, I need to check the sign here. That's going to be, let me check that here. So that's six minus three. So that's positive. So this should be positive three. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because uh, six, right? And then six minus three is three. So that's positive. Okay. All right. And then, um, and then we have a row. So for the last row, we're going to get uh, zero, 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 and four. So we get zero there, minus three times two is negative six. Negative six plus six is zero. And then we get negative nine, negative nine plus 13 uh, will be four. All right. Okay, so so there is, right? So there is u, okay? So remember, u doesn't have to be square. It's L, it's L that has to be square. Okay, so this is u, okay? All right, so now we gotta figure out what L is. Okay, so, so this is where we need to go back and look at this carefully, right? So remember A, right? So a, so we're trying to figure out L times U. So A, since A is three by four, okay, and U, so U, have, U is going to be the same size as A. So this will be three by four. So that means L, for the to make sure things are compatible, right? That means this, right? This has to be what? Three, uh, three by three because these two values must be the same, right? And, right, since this is three, this has to be three, and therefore we get three by four, okay? And so our L has to be a three by three square matrix. So let's do that here. Okay, so there's there's L, right, with the ones on the diagonal. So now we go back and look at the row operations. Okay, so we use, so to make this, so make that zero, we use three. Make that position zero, we used minus two. And to make this one zero, okay, uh, we used minus three. I just numbered the steps there. Okay. All right. So first one, three. So that's oh, that affecting that position. So that's minus. So you take the opposite. Uh, for the second one, we use minus two. So that's going to become positive two. Okay. And then third one. For, so that for that entry, which corresponds to this entry. Okay. Uh, that's going to be positive three. There it is. So you can check the result. You can take L times U and you see you end up getting A. Right, okay. So that's our LU factorization, okay. So it's a very nice technique. Um, it's used, uh, it's definitely used uh, a lot in uh, engineering, okay, when it comes to like larger systems. If you, for, for some of you that are going on more of the applied route, okay, like an applied math or, or um, let's say engineering, 
Um, there's a course that you take called lin so there's a, a numerical linear algebra. Sometimes um, sometimes they cover this in numerical analysis, and uh, you actually learn how to implement this. So you actually learn how to code this up uh, to give you L and U, and then from there, once you have L and U, then you can uh, you can write a separate piece of code uh, to solve this to to solve the system. Okay. All right. So let's. So let's discuss briefly the idea, right? A little bit of the theory behind LU factorization, okay? Um, and hopefully that will answer, uh, hopefully that will, uh, that will explain why, uh, why we use the, uh, why we take the opposite values of these, of these numbers when we're, when we're constructing L, okay? And to, to, to understand what's going on behind the scenes, uh, we have to go back to the idea of, of the elementary uh, matrices. Okay. Use. Elementary matrices to write A, matrix A in upper triangular form. Okay, so so we, we have a matrix, right? And you're doing the, you're going through the row operations and you're taking A and transforming it into U, okay? Uh, much like we saw with uh, the idea with the inverse, okay? So you, so for each, for each elementary matrix corresponds to a unique row operation, okay? So you have, okay, let's say EP, okay? Then you have E3, Let's say E2, E1, and, okay? and this is all acting on A. So your first, so E1 will be the first elementary row operation on A. Then whatever you get, you're going to do the second one, and then the third one, and then all the way up into to the last one. So you have a finite set of elementary row operations that are acting on A. And that's going to transform A, right, so into U. That's the goal, right? Okay, so we have we have an equation to work with. We have a right, system here. All right, so now um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take and multiply both sides of this by the inverse of this in front of a the this, the matrix in front of a. So that's going to be e. So we have e p b e two e one. So if I multiply, so again, going back to the idea of matrix algebra, if I multi, if I take the inverse of this on this side, then I have to be consistent with uh, over here. So I have to take this and multiply it on the left side of U. Okay. Now we know, um, so when we take so we can simplify this. Okay. Um, so when we when we write this and when we uh, simplify this, remember that if you have a product of matrices uh, and you're taking the inverse of those, then you can you write them in the opposite way and then take the inverse of each one. And we also know that elementary matrices, okay, are invertible. Okay, so the inverse will exist. You get E one inverse. E2 inverse, E3 inverse.
Okay, so what's going to happen here when you gather these up? Um, okay, oh, this is the first here. So when you remove, right, we can remove these, okay? Right, so what's going to happen is that E, so for example, EP inverse, okay, times, so the inverse of, of this elementary matrix times this will be I. And then that's going to leave you with the inverse of this, or sorry, the product of E3 inverse and E3, that's going to be I. And then E2 inverse, right, that's going to be I. So E2, right, and then this will be I. Okay, so, right, this is I, and then eventually this all becomes I. Let's go up here. So you get I times A equals to this. Okay. We know that I times A, this I is the identity matrix. So that's just A. And again, when you take the inverse of this, this is just going to become E1 inverse. Right, times E2 inverse, times E3 inverse, and so on. You do that for each of the elementary matrices. Now you can see, basically now you can see what's happening here. Oh, so this right here, if you take the product of all these, um, in, all these elementary, the inverse of these elementary matrices, this turns out to be L. So therefore, okay, uh, we end up getting A equals to L times U. And again, we know that elementary matrices are invertible, okay? And to understand a little bit more about what, so how does this, how does this, so why does the sign change here? Well, let's take a specific look at um, an element. So let's take a specific look at one of the elementary matrices over here. So let's say we have, right? So let's look at I2, for example. So let's create an elementary matrix, right? So we can do that by taking uh, two times row one, adding it to row two and storing that result in row two. So we can take this and operate on I. So when we, when we do that, okay, we're gonna recall this E1. So that's gonna be one, zero, two, one. So that's the elementary matrix for corresponding to this row operation, okay? That we apply to this identity matrix. Now, if we take, let's figure out the inverse of this. And we can easily do that. This is for two by two. But remember for the inverse of a two by two, and I'll write the formula over here. That's the matrix, right? Then the inverse, right? Inverse of A is simply going to be one over the determinant of A times E A minus C here and then minus B. So here, if we apply that, right? So the inverse, so first of all, the determinant of E1 is going to be one minus zero, which is just one. The scalar is just gonna be one over one, right? And then we're gonna get one, one here, and then minus two and zero. So we change the signs on the off, on the, on the off diagonal. So there it is. So you can see the correlation between, I hope, I hope you can see that. So here's the, right? So you can see the correlation between this elementary matrix and this one, right? So, so minus, so we use two here, okay? And there's the minus two that happened, that occurs in the inverse. And now if you put everything together, right, each one of these, right, corresponds to a elementary row operation that we use. And so then to construct this, we take, right, uh, we put in the opposite sign in each of its place, okay? And so, the, right, just like we did here, right? So like what's happening here. So so for that, row, for that elementary row operation, since we use two, then the inverse is gonna be, uh, you're gonna, so the inverse will, the position of this for this inverse is going to be minus two, the opposite value. Okay. So yeah, so that's how that's so this is the uh, the core idea behind LU factorization uh, using elementary row operations or using the elementary matrices. Okay. So really, really, really interesting.
All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think that's it. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's LU factorization. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll see y'all next time.